In the last video, we did some introduction to Rolle's theorem, and we did a couple examples. Uh, this video, I'd like to do a question where we're trying to prove that f of x, in this case, does not have two real roots, and we're going to use a contradiction and Rolle's theorem in order to do this proof. So, to start off this proof, if we're asked to prove by contradiction, and it's saying prove that this does not have two real roots, then we would assume that there are two real roots. And then hopefully we would reach some sort of contradiction that says that's not possible. So let's assume that f of x has two real roots. Okay. Great. And let's let's let f of let's let f of x at at x equals a. Let's let this be equal to zero. And f of x equals b be equal to zero. So all I've done now is just define our two real roots, and that's f of a and f of b. And we can see that from our function we have like a polynomial and we've got some trig functions in there so there's no discontinuities and it's continuous as well over its entire interval so we should be able to apply Rolle's theorem to these two points a and b right so since f of x is entirely continuous and differentiable we can use Rolle's theorem. Great. And by Rolle's theorem, we know that there is some C, and there's some C that exists between A and B. where the derivative of the function at that value of c must be equal to zero, right? So let's take the derivative, f prime of x, and what's our derivative here? Our, we've got x, the first term, x times cosine of x. So we gotta use product rule. So f prime, so uh, we've got one times the derivative or times cosine of x, right? And then we've got minus uh, the first term and then times the derivative of the second term, which would be negative sine of x. And then we've got plus x squared minus sine x. So that would be plus two x and then minus sine of x would just be minus cosine of x. Great. And we can see that our cosine of x here would cancel out. And we've got now f prime of x would be equal to, this would be just x times sine of x plus 2x. And we know that f prime of c equals 0. According to Rolle's theorem, if there's two roots, uh, a and b, then there's going to be that value of c where the derivative equals zero, and that's going to be at c times sine of c plus two times c. Great. So now we are just solving this for the roots, right? Okay. And we can factor out the c, right? And we're left with sine of c plus 2 times c is equal to 0. So we can see here that the value of c that would give this roots are c equals 0. And when sine of c is equal to negative 2, like sine c plus 2, we'll set that equal to 0. 
and not clearly has no solutions because that's outside of the range of sign which means that according to our Rolle's theorem that c has to equal zero that that critical point has to be equal to zero so uh, let's just write that down to remind ourselves for x equals c, which is between a and b, remember a and b are the roots that we assumed were true, c has to equal 0. Okay, so we know that's got to be true, and what we're going to do now is let's, let's take a look at the roots of f of x, right? And let's see if that contradicts what we found must be true by Rolle's theorem. Finding roots of f of x. Okay. So we've set the function equal to zero and we're solving for the roots. Now, this is pretty tricky to solve, um, but a little bit of like a, a trick which can sort of work in this case is if we set this equal to zero and then we set this equal to zero and <clears throat> see if the solutions of these can line up with each other. So we've got x cosine of x plus x squared equals zero. And factoring that, we've got x times cosine of x plus x equals zero so this tells us that we've got one root at x equals zero and then the other at cos x equals minus x and if you were to think of like a unit circle the cosine of x is essentially like the the x value right of our unit circle and x is like the input so Cosine of x is never equal to negative x. Um, and if you don't believe me, then draw out a unit circle and see if you can find any point where that's true. And you'll see that there's no solutions to this. So no solutions. But we do get x equals 0. And then we've got minus sine of x equals 0. And that's just the same thing as sine of x equals 0. And when is that true? Let's think of our unit circle, right? Well, sine of x is like the essentially like the, the y value. And the y value would be equal to 0 when the angle is either 0 or pi radians, right? Either like 0 degrees or 180 degrees. Those are when the y values are 0. So that's telling us that x equals 0 and x equals pi are solutions to that. But remember what we're looking at here. We're saying that this whole thing, like the summation of those two terms, needs to equal 0. So if this one is equal to 0, like this, this term we know is only ever equal to 0 when x equals 0. So if this one was pi, then we would just have 0 minus pi, and that's clearly not equal to 0. So when they're both equal to 0, though, then we have 0 minus 0 is equal to 0, which is what we're looking for. And you got to be careful when you're applying rules like this, because this is, like, there could be some other values, right, of x times cos x plus x squared um, that's not equal to 0. And if it's equal to the same thing of, like, sine of x, then it could equal zero but just if you were to graph that you would see that there is only one root and that root does belong at x equals zero this is just like a, a quick little way of solving it um, you just need to make sure that you're doing something that makes sense mathematically and you're considering every every uh, like possible solution so we see 
that x equals 0. This is the only root of f of x. But remember what we like did earlier? We said that when we assume that there are two roots at a and b, we use the Rolle's theorem to find that value of c, um, where the derivative between a and b um, is equal to zero. That's only that has to be true at c equals zero. But now we just found the roots of f of x, and we saw that x equals zero was the only root. Right. So you can see that this is contradicting itself. When we found the roots, we found that there was only one root at x equals zero. When we assumed that there were two roots and we used Rolle's theorem, we found that the value of c that was in between the interval between the two roots must be equal to zero. So by contradiction, this function cannot have two real roots. right? And that's exactly what it asked us to do. Prove that f of x does not have two real roots. So we assume that there were two real roots and we used Rolle's theorem and we found that value of c where that has to be true. Then we found the roots of f of x and saw that it contradicted the results that uh, we found when we assumed that the roots were the, that we had two real roots. And that's about it for this question. Um, yeah, I guess feel free to leave a comment below if you are like a math major and maybe have like a bit more insight into this. Um, like. Uh, then yeah, I, I'd love to hear it. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful.